Hello guys, let's make this bolder and more legible. Application fee. The application fee has been waived for the winter 2025, spring, summer 2025, and fall 2025 terms. It means you do not have to pay any application fee. You're not paying a dime while submitting your application to this university. And I'm talking about Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan, United States. But there's a bit of a problem here. If everybody can apply without an application fee, it means there'll be thousands of application and the competition will be quite steep. So how then do you get ahead of the competition if there are going to be lots of applications from different categories of applicants? So I'll be showing you that today. So yes, you get application fee waivers. I will also show you how to get your English test waiver. But most importantly, I'll show you how to apply so you can get funding, which is the ultimate goal. Because what's the point getting your application fee waived, getting the English language test waived, only to end up not getting admission or not getting funding? So funding is the goal. These will help you get funding, but make sure you prioritize getting funding because that's the ultimate. That's what we're aiming at. So welcome to my YouTube channel. It is Victor once again. It's another day and we have another scholarship. If you're joining us for the first time, you're welcome, but where have you been? There are lots of videos already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So look around. I'm sure you find something that catches your interest. So I often get emails or DMs of people saying, I have a BSc in nursing. I'm looking for a master's. Can you help me? There are already videos on this channel, I think, or I know, on different fields, on different disciplines. So check. I would hardly respond to that kind of an email because I'm very busy. I get like 10 or 20 of those emails or DMs every day. And I cannot just go on an errand because of you and you no know, derail for my job or things like that. I think I'm ranting here, but you get the idea. So there are lots of materials already on this channel. So look around. I'm sure you find something. Just dig. You'll find something in your area of interest. And if you're a returning viewer, returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for the constant support. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. So let's go into the business of the day. So we are at Wayne State University, Detroit, Michigan. And as I said in the intro, no application fee, zero, no dime at all. Just apply with your documents. But then the problem is because there's no application fee, we have lots of applications because the door is, has been left wide open. So what do you do? to put your application in front, to put, make your application competitive. So that's what I'll be showing you now. So first of all, you know what they call those sometimes annoying, to be honest, English language test. So imagine you've already studied in the English language and then they're still asking for like the IELTS or the TOEFL. So what do you do? So this is the, cat the tab for international students. So if you fall into that category, you might want to take a look at this tab as well. And you get... Um, information about things like the English language test I just talked about. Fortunately, there are waivers. So demonstrate English proficiency. You can see it here. These are the exams I talked about. Quite expensive with the exchange rate. Also take a number of time, um, hours, time consuming to prepare for. But if you scroll down, you get the countries that are exempt from presenting any of those English language tests. And right off the bat, I can see my country here already. Where are you, Nigeria? <laughs> Let's make it bolder. Yes, this is Nigeria here already. There is Ghana as well. So if you believe you've already studied the English language, please tell them, even if your country is not on this list, you can contact them directly and say, hey, this is proof that I studied already in the English language. And I think my English language test should be waived because... Yeah, it will be repetitive to take an English language test in the first place. So that is of the way. So remember, we started with the application fee waiver. So we have that waived, no application fee. Just to make it bolder in case you've forgotten. And now the English language proficiency test also waived. So now let's go to the different courses, different programs available. So back to this website where we started. And then we're going to explore programs, 
explore programs. You can see I'm showing you step by step. So do the same, explore the website and look for the information that suits you. So these are the different programs. You get masters, you get PhD. I've said this in my, in my previous videos and I would say it again. Most US universities give more funding, more scholarships, if that's what you want to call it, or assistantship, for PhDs than masters. But the good news for you is if you have a BSc, you can move directly to a PhD in most US universities. So the application requirement for a PhD is often the same as a master's, just your BSc. It is because if you're doing a PhD in the US, most times you have to do like coursework for one, two years. And in the process of doing your PhD, you earn a master's. Some people I know will even stop with the master's and say they're not continuing with the PhD. But it's good for them because they already have a fully funded master's. The problem is if you apply for a master's, some of them are not funded. So you might get admission, but you might not get a scholarship. So check for whatever master's, if you're not interested in a PhD, and you still do not want to even attempt it and throw my advice to the wind, that's fine. But check very closely that the master's you're applying for is funded unless you have the money to fund for yourself, I mean. So enough of that preaching, let's go straight to the video. So we, these are the different courses at this university and we can just look at one course and um, for example, let's see anatomy and cell biology. So how do you apply for anatomy cell biology? You can click on this and it's good to read the details about the course because these are some of the details you have to put on your um, application essay because you have to write an essay why you're applying to this university, why you're applying to this department. You need information, program information about us program you need information these kinds of information summarized in your own words personalized as well do not just copy and paste from their websites because they will know but you have to summarize them in your own words and write in your essays why you want to study here so don't just rush to apply a number of people do that unfortunately they see a scholarship they don't even read the instructions rush to apply so take time sit down read through the website look at their strengths look at their faculty before you can put forward a very convincing application. But for the sake of this video, I'll just show you the, the major points. So let's go to admissions. Admissions, the admissions requirements. You can see what they require, whether they require the GRE or not. And um, I think for a number of them, it is optional for a number of um, departments. For some, it is compulsory. So check whether it's um, optional or compulsory for your own department. So as I said, there are departmental variations. Just check whether it's compulsory or optional for your own department. And let's look at financial aid. So application documents can always check that on your own and see what it entails. And there's an application button here if you think you are ready to apply. But let's check, what about money, scholarship? What do we do with scholarship? How do we get to finance these um, studies? So let's go to financial aid. So financial aid is looking good. I think there's a funding package for students from different nationalities, different countries. So this is good. And there are other small stipend you can also get, 2,000, yeah, 5,000 there. So it's fully funded, so do not worry, there's financial aid when you get into this program. So just check the departments, as I said, check the admissions requirements. Do you need a GRE or not? Some departments will ask you for a GRE, others will not. So take time and check for your own department. If you need to write a GRE, unfortunately, you still have to write it to be competitive. So that is it for this department. As I said, departmental variations, pay attention to that. Another thing about um, applying to the US is that you're often advised to contact a supervisor. So some um, departments will specify that you need to contact a supervisor by going to the faculty page and um, checking who is on the faculty and things like that. I don't think anything was written here in that regard, whether you should contact somebody in the faculty or not. 
So read closely and see if you need to contact somebody. If you're not sure, still navigate the department website and check, ask them a question that do you need, look for the, these are different, um, different admin members. You can go through any of these people, usually maybe the head of the department or the dean, maybe the departmental secretary, or you can see the graduate coordinator. You can ask her and say, hey, I wish to apply for this course. Um, I know it's for some um, US universities, you meant to contact potential supervisors before you apply. Do I need to do that? Or can I just apply directly? Is it just sufficient to name people, name possible supervisors without actually contacting them? So you can do that by sending an email to the relevant and admin personnel, and I'm sure they'll give you a befitting and a befitting response. So that is what you can do to increase your chances if there is no instruction already on contacting faculty members. So there is this department that stated the exact amount of the stipend. And I think it's still um, cell biology, I believe. And okay, there are two cell biologies here. Just stay with me. This is the one we looked at earlier. I think this one stated the exact amount of what you earn as um, a PhD student as a stipend, I believe. So we're still using the same example, but just a different, there are three different graduate courses there. So anatomy, cell biology. So we're going to this one for just a PhD. Let's click on it. So this is it. So I believe it was here I saw the exact amount for the assistantships. Let it load quickly. So here you have it exactly. I know I saw this some minutes before filming this video. So here it was clearly stated that the stipend is $30,000. $30,000 and you get tuition cover as well. So here they were very particular about what you'll be earning when you get into this, this department. So of course, check for your own department as well. Yeah. So that is it for this one. We can check another department for the sake of trying to check. So it's a very long list here of different departments. And I think this is, um. which one did we check earlier? We checked anatomy and cell biology we can go down here and check maybe chemistry or something or anthropology yeah I can go to anthropology and check as well so phd anthropology let's see what they are saying so this is it and let's go to phd Scroll down a little, let's go to admissions. Okay, PhD admissions, normal documents, official transcript, statement of purpose, recommendation letter, write it sample. For this department, the GRE is no longer required for admission. So for anthropology, you do not need the GRE. They didn't say anything about contacting a professor as well. So once again, it's good to ask them and say, hey, I'm interested in this course. Do I need to contact a professor? You can go to the frequently asked questions section to see if there are other things you might need, other pieces of information you think you need for this application. Something like funding, for instance, you can see funding. Are PhD students automatically funded? And they kind of said yes, said that they ensure that all PhD students have funding. So that's good enough. So what about masters? Remember what I told you about masters? That not all of them are funded. Well, here they said they're eligible for some tuition waivers. So there are some departments that would, of course, give masters full and some partial, but you're more likely to get full tuition and stipend as a PhD student than as a master's student. And since the application requirements are similar or are the same, why not apply for a PhD instead of a master's? I hope I'm not overkilling this argument, but it's just it's important to make clear um, the point I'm trying to make. So that is it for anthropology. So check for your own department and see what is obtainable. It's a very long list here. So navigate and see. I'm sure you find something that catches your interest. So finally, let us look at political science, my field. Let's see. 
if anything is happening here. So this is political science and um, scroll down a little. These are the different subfields. And as usual, check for the admissions requirements for this department. So check things like GRE. We already know that application fees are waived. So that's a good thing. Check for the different, um, what other documents do you need to provide? Of course, the application deadline as well. It's also very important. And do not forget to inquire whether to contact a professor or not before you apply. So this department requires GRE. You can see GRE scores here. So you can see the departmental variations I talked about. So that is it guys, check for your own department and I'm sure you find something. Unfortunately, as I said, since it's an open door policy, you might have to do something extra to put your application forward. And that extra thing might just be to write a GRE or to bring very strong application documents like your statement of purpose, very good results and things like that to distinguish yourself from the crowd. That is very important in universities where there is no application fee. So I hope this was useful, guys. Wayne State University, fully funded graduate opportunities, no application fee, um, English waivers also available, as we saw earlier. So get to work, start working. This is the application period, and this is the time to start asking questions. Ask questions on time, contact the university for clarification, and hopefully contact your references as well to get ready to put in references for you. As usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. So get to work. And those who have not subscribed, do so because many more videos. I have like, I'm researching up to 20 more universities giving application fee waivers in the US. So that will drop soon. If you're not subscribed, you'll probably not see this channel again. So do so and welcome to the family. As usual, we cannot wait to celebrate you. So get to work and I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now. Cheers.